Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my new video. So I figured that besides doing videos about why aging is a disease and refuting the common objections of that position in my longer videos, I thought it would be nice to change things up a bit and do shorter videos, kind of like new snippets uh, about aging. I hope this is a better view. Um, I'm sorry about the shoddy camera work. It's kind of hard to get a good angle here. Hopefully you don't mind this. Oh, and if it looks weird that I'm lo not looking directly at the camera, keep in mind that I'm actually reading off a script that I wrote. Well, anyways, there was quite a number of great things that happened this year concerning the fight against aging. But most notably, you might have heard about a drug called metformin. Metformin is a, commonly, is a common drug that's used against type 2 diabetes. It regulates sugar levels in the body but what makes it special for aging in particular is that scientists have found out that it might have certain properties that make it slow down or reverse aging. When scientists gave metformin to mice in the lab, they've noticed that metformin has increased the lifespan of mice by 40%. Quoting this article from the uh, Telegraph, when Belgian researchers tested metformin on the tiny round worm C. elegans, the worms not only aged slower, but they also stayed healthier longer. They did not slow down or develop wrinkles. Mice treated with metformin increased their lifespan by nearly 40%, and their bones were also stronger. Last year, Car Cardiff University found that when patients with diabetes were given the drug metformin, they in fact lived longer than others without the condition even though they should have died eight years earlier on average. Let's quickly look at what the news has to say about this drug. All right, well, the anti-aging business is a multi-billion dollar gold mine. Women lured into buying hope in a bottle and men, creams and injections that promise to make them look younger, but now scientists say they've made a breakthrough in the search for a fountain of youth. Researchers in London have extended the lifespan of mice and reduced age-related diseases. Dr. Evelyn Manaya is a gynecologist with the Riverview Medical Center, and she joins us now. Hi, doctor. Hi, how are you, Patty Ann? So it's already been shown that a drastically reduced daily calorie intake can make you live longer by changing your body chemistry and now they've been able to replicate those chemical changes in mice through genetic mutation is that right yes it is and remember we already have actually an actual drug that works the same way and what it does is that it manipulates a little bit the protein that's already inside of your body and that's in the form of metformin now if you remember metformin is actually given to people that have insulin resistance which by the way is genetic so you know what Suzanne Summers and uh, Ponce de Leon you were all wrong the fountain of youth is not actually found in a bottle or is it a fountain or anything else like that it is actually inherited as we've known for a long long time but um, they, they can possibly be able to replicate these results that they got in mice how far might we be from trying this on people yeah that's a very very good question hopefully will we will be able to focus on this because remember if we do not reduce our caloric intake it does lead into obesity and then of course high blood pressure and diabetes remember this study doesn't really pertain to how you look it's rather than the quality of your life as you age so it is a very very important thing that we do work on it hopefully in the next two to three years like I said, metformin has been around for a couple of years already. We'll be able to, you know, present some more um, interesting medications out there. But how complicated might it be and what would be the potential side effects? Well, that's just it. We didn't talk about side effects. And remember, in this study, only women uh, benefited from this. So that was the other thing, too. So we have to now do a little bit and expand to human studies and then see if we can actually get them to do it for men and women. Yeah, um, this calorie-restricted diet does extend life, but the people who are on it say they're always hungry. And uh, Does this new method, though, potentially improve the quality as well as the quantity of life? Yes, it does. As a matter of fact, in these mice, it was very interesting because I was like, yay, I can eat anything that I want to <laughs> and then still, you know, enjoy and not gain weight or anything else like that. Um, I think that that's, that's why we fail in most diets, just long-term. We don't have a good long-term thing, and I think that this is the focus of this 
genetic study is that the long-term effect of you dropping your weight and reducing your caloric intake without feeling hungry all the time so you won't put all that stuff back into your system again. And I think that, like I said, your life expectancy, obviously, with the quality of life, that's the most important thing, we will also benefit. Yeah. All right. Dr. Evelyn Manaya, thanks. So, like the two ladies in the video just said, um, metformin is, some, is somewhat of an old drug. It already has FDA approval. This gives metformin a big advantage. It makes it a lot easier to, to test it on human beings to see whether it has legitimate anti-aging effects than to develop an entirely new drug that's solely focused on slowing down aging, which would cost companies a tremendous amount of time and money and just isn't likely to happen. Scientists are now doing trials on human beings to see if the drug, if this, uh, if this drug does actually slow down aging or reverse aging in humans like it does in mice. Quoting another article, the team will test the notion in a clinical trial called targeting aging with metformin or TAME. They will give the drug metformin to thousands of people who already have one or two of three conditions, cancer, heart disease, or cognitive impairment, or are at risk of them. The participants will then be monitored to see whether the medication forestalls the illness and death. On 24th of June, researchers will try to convince FDA officials that if the trial succeeds, they will have proof that a drug can delay aging that would set a precedent that aging is a disorder that can be treated with medicines and perhaps spur progress and funding for aging research. This is extremely good news, uh, at least for those of us hoping to see a change in the common mainstream perception on aging. And this is mostly for two reasons. If this drug succeeds and we find out that there is evidence that it slows down aging, this could set a trend where companies will actually start developing drugs for the sole purpose of either slowing aging or reversing the damage it causes. As it currently stands, there is no medically approved drug that is developed solely for that purpose. There are drugs that can be used off-label for that, which have longevity as a side effect, but nothing made solely for that. This is the case for a number of reasons. The biggest one being that aging is simply not looked at as a disease, but another issue is that companies simply want the biggest return on investment. So more often than not, they aren't going to focus on issues such as aging because it's such a big and complicated problem. They need tons of time and money for research and development that may not even successfully develop a drug or a therapy that can slow down aging. So it's a real gamble. But even if they did develop such a thing, they still have to wait at least five years to go through trials by institutions such as the FDA in order to get it to the public. And most drugs that go through these trials never make it to the public because they have too many side effects. Um, as, a result of, as a result of all this, companies generally look for low-hanging fruits, things that they can fix with little time and little financial investment that can get them a lot of money. Aging, unfortunately, is one of these things. However, if metformin succeeds and its aging trials, in, in its aging trials and start making money from that, that could change and we could start seeing more drugs like metformin ones that are solely developed to treating aging. The second and much bigger reason is, um, as it currently stands, aging is universally not looked at as a disease or even a problem at all. It's looked at as a natural thing and even a good thing, while the amount of suffering it, causing, it causes is simply disregarded. But like the article we read earlier said, this tame trial could change all of that. Regardless of whether the drug is successful or not in treating aging, it could, medically speaking, change the way we look at aging. Maybe not as a disease, but at least as a condition that can have its own treatments. I actually asked a question on Quora asking when aging will be reclassified as a disease, and I was surprised that Aubrey D. Gray, the founder of the Sense Research Foundation, actually replied to my question and talked about the TAME trial and what it means for aging. And yeah, he was the inspiration behind this video. Let's take, a look, let's take a look at what he said. I'm okay with calling aging an uber disease that encompasses all aspects of the ill health of old age, but no more. 
But the thing that really matters is not whether we call aging a disease, but whether we call it a condition for which treatments can be approved and reimbursed. That, I'm overjoyed to say, is a question on which there has recently been fantastic progress. Spearheaded by Nir Berziali and colleagues in the form of the TAME trial for metformin. The definition of the endpoint in terms of the presence of more than one of the key features of age-related ill health is a perfectly good practical, practical definition of aging. And even if the TAME trial itself is unsuccessful, the precedent that it has laid down in terms of how to structure future clinical trials will stand and will be copied increasingly often. This makes me very happy. And I do entirely agree with him. Even if aging is not officially recognized as a disease, it may not matter so much so long as we see it as a treatable condition with which profits can be made. However, with that being said, it still wouldn't hurt if aging is reclassified as a disease, as it could drive even further interest into the problem and would do a great deal to change mainstream views on aging. In 2018, the International Classification of Disease, a manual that serves as the standard for diagnosing illnesses and diseases globally, is set for its 11th revision. The International Classification of Diseases, or ICD for short, is maintained by the World Health Organization, and its revision is going to take place in Japan, Tokyo. Hopefully, drugs like metformin and others like it could lead to the World Health Organization to include aging in the ICD. If you're interested in seeing this happening, you can also submit your own proposal to the World Health Organization online and ask them to include aging as a disease. I'll leave a link for that in the description box. But even if that never happens, I think now that we have metformin and other drugs like it, like rapamycin and resveratrol, that are being pushed as treatments for aging is going to mean we will see more of these sorts of drugs and hopefully better treatments in the future. Does that mean I think you should go out and get metformin as soon as possible? Not so fast. I actually don't think you should do that, at least not yet, because metformin is still in trials, so we don't know yet how well it can treat aging, if at all. And besides this, the drug has a number of side effects that may include nausea, vomiting, upset stomach, or diarrhea. And some people are even saying that, they're, that the drug is causing them issues with their cognition and memory. So please be careful and do your research about it before you take it and discuss it with your doctor. And thanks for watching. Peace.